Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Renata Benadi, the host of the Job Hunting Podcast. And in this podcast, I give you tips, advice, and I interview experts to help you nail your next job and have the career that you want. In this episode, we will focus on seven crucial lessons I have learned the hard way from my job hunting experience. I'm sharing this with you so you don't have to learn it the hard way. See, humans are great learners. Thousands of years ago, one of us learned how to make fire and we learned from him or her, and now everybody knows it. One of us made an error or a will and we learned and so on and so on. But nowadays, there is so much in terms of information out there on the World Wide Web and at times I have felt overwhelmed. I certainly felt that when I was job hunting, um, I also could never find the support and the answers to the questions that I had. And I was intrigued by that. You know, I was on the thick of it and I had so many questions about what I was going through during job hunting and being interviewed and going through selection processes. And I couldn't really find the answers. And examples of things that I was looking for were things like, you know, is it normal to have three board presentations in a row for a an executive role you know why are they asking me to come back over and over again and how much of my ip should i give in these long presentations in this long executive search processes i i couldn't really understand um uh what was going th- what i was going through can I take time to think about the offer, you know, and how long can I can I reflect upon an offer and how, what sort of counter offer is a good one for me to negotiate with my um, my future future employer? Why has it taken weeks for anyone to get back to me about an application? And while, what do you do when you have so many applications going on at the same time and you have a, a preferred one and you haven't heard from them, but you have heard from another one, what do you do then? You know, all of these questions I found, I couldn't find answers for. And you can Google them and you won't find either. Um, also things about resumes and um, cover letters that I have found online and I found that the the answers and the advice I received was incorrect, mainly because many of these, um, inf- the, the information that I found was for America, which is fine and good, but I'm in Australia and it's a different um, uh, sort of culture and recruitment uh, process you would think that it's the same but it's not also a resume for a senior executive is different from a resume from a graduate or early career professional so all of these differences sometimes are not made clear when you're searching online Other interesting questions are what to do when you're not sure if you should jump ship. You know, if somebody calls you about a position and you're happy at work where you are, it's hard to make that decision because you feel compelled to try something new. But should you? You know, are you ready to make a change? Is it a good timing for you? How can you be sure that it's the right time to leave your job? And how come no one ever told me it was this complicated and stressful when you are going through um, a job hunting and you're in between roles? Um, What is the flow of communication like with recruiters? You know, what's the right etiquette and when should you be approaching them when you're going through that long process uh, for a position? And why am I not getting interviews? If I completely meet the selection criteria, what's keeping people from getting me through the door to get to know me better? You know, that's something that happens, uh, especially to um, clients of mine. They are perfect for the role, but they're not being called for interviews and they don't understand why. All of these questions are real questions and I, I now know the answers to all of them and and when I don't I know how to um, identify the problem areas and seek and find solutions for my clients and for my followers and for my students 
But why would someone know if they are not job hunting for the first time? You know, if you've been out of the job hunting scene for the last five, 10 years, there's no reason for you to know any of this. And you won't find the answers uh, Googling, like I said, you know, I've tried. So with my social media platforms like Facebook and my Instagram, my company page on LinkedIn, and also with my services to my clients and students, I address all of these questions from the very basic ones to the real complex ones. And to get you into the habit of investing in your career, I've started this project called Reset Your Career. Together with the episodes 12, 13, and 14 of the Job Hunting Podcast, this episode is a companion to the 31 Days of Actions to Reset Your Career. The goal of this project is to help professionals take one day at a time in creating new habits and taking actions that will have a positive effect in their career advancement and job hunting prospects. It's an opportunity for you to press the reset button whenever you feel ready and incorporate these actions in your life. At least give them a try. If you want to follow the final days of the project day by day, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or my company LinkedIn page. I will leave the links on the show notes for you to click and find me there. Now, an update from Australia. I'm actually recording this episode on the same day that it's going live. It's a just-in-time situation here at the moment. It's January and I have my oldest son staying with me. So I, you know, I'm kind of in half work, half um, summer holiday mode. And sometimes things don't go exactly to plan. But we had a lot of rain last night and it was a dirty, dirty rain. So all my friends have been sending photos of their pools and and and, <laughs> and cars and it's really a mess. And if you're watching the Australian Open, you would have known that um, they had to delay the um, matches this morning because all of the courts that are open air, they are, are so dirty, they had to be cleaned up. So it was like 12 hours of a very strange rain, you know, and it's because um, of all of the fires and the dust storms that we're having. We are having the weirdest of summers in Australia, that's for sure. And the the Job Hunting Podcast will be supporting the recovery efforts in Australia because we are experiencing unprecedented fire destructions this summer. So by supporting this podcast, Uh, by downloading it, giving reviews and ratings, um, subscribing to the newsletter, you will be helping too. And for details of how to do that and to click and subscribe and all of that, please check the show notes and I will leave all the links there for you. Right, let's dive into the topic of this podcast. Let's talk about the seven crucial lessons I have learned the hard way from my job hunting experience. Number one, appreciate what you have achieved in your career so far and write it down. Write it down, say it out loud, tell your best friend, your husband, your sister, your mother, um, share that with people that uh, surround you with love and support you. Feel that great feeling inside from having achieved already in your career. And that's sometimes hard to start, but once you do, it's really a great experience. Give it a go. Um, This is something I find really important and I'm always um, doing it myself. I just bought a Panda, Um, what is it called? Let me get it here. It's a panda calendar. It's a quarterly calendar. And one of the things that I had to do right at the beginning was to list all of my achievements. And I felt a little bit lazy about doing that. Um, And I didn't want to do it because I thought, oh, I know. But once you start listing them, it's such a good feeling to actually know that you have achieved so much already and in 
the case with this uh, Payande um, diary, it was uh, with the two and a half months that I've been doing this project supporting career um, enthusiasts and job hunters. So I'm focusing on, on developing a planning and a schedule for the, the next quarter for you. So it was really good to see and to write down all of the things that I have achieved so much, like launching this podcast and um, doing the, the newsletters and launching my Job Hunting Made Simple course and so on. All of that in two and a half months is quite a lot. And if you think about all of the things that you have achieved already in your career and put it into paper and start talking about it, saying it out loud, it will make you feel so much better. And I, I learned it too late. I left it too late. It's never too late, but I wish I had known this earlier in my career. I wish that um, I had done this exercise of um, writing down my achievements much, much sooner than I did. It's never too late to start, but the sooner you start, the better. It will make you um, a much better um, and more confident professional. So do that, please. Number two, call or meet someone you trust. Discuss your career with them. When you go out socially and meet your friends, we end up talking um, about work. Sometimes we do it a little bit. Sometimes we talk a lot about work. It's a good venting mechanism and your social network support you and they champion you and they want to hear what you have to say. Sometimes they can be devil's advocate. Most of the time they're supporting you and feeling what you're feeling and, you know, just exacerbating whatever um, uh, situation that you're explaining. So if you're frustrated at work, your friends will be frustrated all the way with you. But career advancement, career transition, and your search for better opportunities at work, they may require a more in-depth, sophisticated even conversation with somebody that you trust. A person that leads you to some important findings, clarifications, and even making decisions about your next step, helping you make those decisions about your next steps. Um, telling and getting advice from someone also makes you accountable for your journey ahead. As soon as you start talking about it in a more serious way, you will be accountable for that. And this is a good thing. I'm happy to be that someone for you, happy to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. Um, for the listeners of this podcast, for a limited period of time, I will be um, giving you a link which you can find on the episode show notes so that you can book a time with me. No charge, no commitment, I'm not selling you anything. I just want to help and it helps me develop my plans for this podcast and for my services for my clients as well to know how um, how you're feeling and how you're progressing in your career advancement plans and your job hunting um, plans. It really does help me as well. Um, it's what I do and it's what I, I love to do. So I'll give you that link, uh, but you, you, you might want to contact somebody else as long as you do. Find someone that you trust, that have your best interests at heart to have that conversation. And this is also something that I learned the hard way and it possibly I possibly could have done something um, sooner to support my career advancement. I certainly had the means to do it in terms of I could financially invest in it. I just didn't think about it and, and I didn't also have the right network because I was um, new to Australia possibly. That sort of played into my uh, the situation I was in as well. But for some reason, and, and it's usually because, you know, where, where my kids went to school and the friendships that I've made, uh, my all my friends were in the health sector and I'm not in the health sector. I I was working at the time for a large um, university and then I moved into uh, not for profit and and so on. And although it was really nice to catch up with them on, on weekends and talk about my work and they were excited for me or sad for me, depending on what we were discussing, 
they couldn't actually help me uh, with my career advancement uh, dreams and aspirations and I possibly could have done um, moved faster with my career if I had found somebody to help me and eventually I did and this person is still in my life and I really adore her she's a great coach um, leadership coach and I will eventually interview her um, in this um, podcast for her for sure there are a couple of coaches I have worked with and I hope that they will all be interviewed in this platform um, at some stage number three consider the pros and cons of job hunting solo versus engaging the help of a coach well as you can see from number two you know I'm biased and I am a career coach and a mentor and an expert in job hunting so yes you're right I will be biased here because all of the cons I found as a job hunter myself I have removed from my career coaching services I don't believe it's cheaper easier or faster to advance your career as a solo agent so for that e reason I offer free advice just follow me on Instagram or Facebook or my LinkedIn um, company page and you will see how much you can learn for free right um, I also offer a weekly newsletter also at no cost to you you will have my list of great articles free templates guides downloads anything that I'm producing that's um, um, free and available plus the new episode of the job hunting podcast plus I curate the best articles that I find and I send it out to my followers and my community through my newsletter and the reason why I do that is because at times I, I, I also find terrible articles and I have mentioned a couple of them in a uh, Facebook uh, video um, because it, it just really worries me that people might be following terrible advice they find online I also offer services at different levels and the plan for me in 2020 is to develop uh, a range of services to cater for people that can't afford um, to spend too much on a career coach like I did in the past um, and um, have different payment plans so this is all happening I am so excited about this and this all started happening um, earlier this month in terms of my planning and my commitment to develop those different service levels for my clients and students and you know for um, the more sophisticated client I have special one-on-one -on -one VIP support for them for those who need an extra helping hand in nailing that senior role or uh, have a specific professional project so I you know I even split my investment uh, into a retainer for that client and a success fee yep that's right that's how much I believe in my my system in the way that I work in my philosophy uh, I have a success fee arrangement with a few clients so if if and when they they get or well when they get a job uh, and if it's through um, the work that we've done together um, you know I, I get a success fee it makes it cheaper for them as a retainer and I truly believe that that's the way to go for me and I don't know anybody else doing that at the moment so I find it really exciting and interesting for me because I'm invested in that client's success as much as they are so once again I'm inviting you for that 30 minute one-on-one -on -one session with me you know what it's probably going to be longer than 30 minutes I've never been able to you know uh, finish a session uh, that in, in that sort of uh, time frame uh, no commitment I'm just hoping to get to know you to get to know my listeners and my followers a bit better so that I can organize uh, these uh, and plan the content for you uh, for the next next podcast and and my social um, content as well as my services in the future so click on the link and tell me um, what is keeping you awake at night in terms of your career advancement and your job search and let's see if I can help you I'd love to and you will certainly be helping me too 
Okay, moving on to number four. And this is a very short and sweet one. Make leave plans for the rest of the year. Book your vacations and your time off. I loved that when I posted this on Instagram or Facebook, I can't remember which one, uh, a couple of people said done and done. <laughs> and this is exactly what we should be doing. We should be planning ahead to rest, to have time off with our family or with ourselves and not think about work and not do anything else but take time off. And if you plan that in advance, you know you have to commit to it, you know you have to uh, book the time, and it doesn't have to be anything ex expensive if you are in between jobs. Don't go and book expensive holidays um, if you can't afford it. Just take time off and do a staycation, go somewhere close by and have a great time. Just treat yourself to a wonderful time resting away from either the work that you're doing or the job hunting that you're involved in now. Number five is to review your living expenses and monthly budget. Now I'm going to start by with a disclaimer to say I'm not a financial advisor. You should consult one if you think you need one, if you're, um, uh, that, that is an important issue for you at the moment. But if you are about to leave your job and or you have left your job already, if you are in any type of career transition, transition situation, this is really a must. You have to review your expenses and eventually possibly reduce your budget. It's just common sense, regardless of your level of savings or if you received a great severance package, still it's imperative for you to plan conservatively for your period of frictional unemployment. So frictional unemployment is the time in between jobs. It's the time it takes for a professional or anybody really to go from one job to another. And depending on your age, your career, the sector, industry that you're in, your circumstances, that frictional unemployment period can vary from a few weeks. It, there's a low chance, but it can really happen that you might get a job immediately, to over 12 months. Also, low chance of that happening, but especially if you're a senior executive, it may take that long for you to get another job. This is also why investing in a career coach is a great option. Let's say the average frictional unemployment is six months, pretty common by the way. If you can speed up your transition by one month and reduce it to five months instead of six, then the investment in the coach is already a great one. Typically, I recommend investing half a month's salary. Let's say you earn $4,000 a month, invest $2,000 in a great career coach program. And remember, or less if you can't afford 2000 but you know, I think two th that's a kind of a great rule of thumb for, for me. And remember, your aim with that investment is not to learn a new skill to add to your resume. So I'm not saying, which many people think is the right thing to do, is to say, oh my goodness, I, I I'm in the job market again and I think I need to learn something new. I need to be a black belt in something or do a project management course or I need to do a, a master's of this or an executive leadership program of that. Um, no. <laughs> uh, chances are uh, you might uncover with uh, by yourself or with the help of a good coach that you already have quite a lot of tools in your toolkit to offer your new employer. The investment in a career coach is to get you a job as fast as possible, a job that you want to do and that it's leading you towards achieving your long-term career goals. That's the investment that you're making. Okay, number six, reconnect with two important people in your network. Now is a great time of the year, it's January, to, it's a good time to reconnect with someone who is really special to you. A mentor, a former manager, a professor, an old colleague. Find a time to rebuild 
those important relationships that inspire and motivate you. This is not about what you want to achieve. It's not about your next job or getting something out of your meeting. This is about coming out of your shelf, uh, your shell, not your shelf, <laughs> learning, giving, and having a good life by surrounding yourself with the great people that you know. And I have learned the hard way as well that it is absolutely okay to reconnect with somebody that you have haven't touched base for a long time. I sometimes felt guilty that I hadn't been in touch for so long and I felt uh, awkward about emailing or giving that person a call only to find out that when I did they were so happy to hear from me and so excited to catch up and have a coffee and it made me happy as well because I was touching base again because that person was special to me and is still special to me. So if you have those people in your life that inspire you, that you've learned from and you haven't seen in a while, chances are they would be delighted to hear from you. So don't wait any longer and get in touch with them. Finally, number seven, are you sleeping eight hours per day? And if not, start now. There is no point in getting all the right things done for your job application and then missing out on sleep. It's unfortunately very common for professionals to sleep less than they should. Oh gosh, there's so much out there about how you know uh, terrible we are at sleeping and resting. And people that are in between jobs as well, they don't sleep very well due to anxiety and stress. You need to trust the system and follow this Reset Your Career project step by step and know that I have your back and you can contact me at any time. I'm offering you the um, chance to touch base with me. Um, I'll leave you the link so you can book your time with me uh, completely free, no commitment whatsoever. Just um, make sure that you feel rested, confident, uh, that you have a plan, you have the Reset Your Career plan, and then go, go to sleep, <laughs> knowing that you, know, you are doing everything possible to speed up your learning curve, to do this simpler, more effective job hunting um, strategy, and know that your new job is coming. That's all for now, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I am delighted that um, I'm on number 15 of my podcast. Every time I get so excited when it's time for me to record. At the beginning, I was really scared, but now it makes me <laughs> really excited. And next week will be the final episode of the Reset Your Career series. And after that, um, I'm going to go back into interviewing some very interesting people for you and I, I think that you will be delighted to hear from them. I look forward to sharing more tips and ideas with you next week and remember to subscribe to my newsletter so that you get the podcast episodes in your inbox together with important news and announcements from me and some extra resources that I curate specially for my community. And don't forget to use that link in the episode show notes to book your session with me so that we can talk about your career, what's keeping you awake at night and how um, you can progress in your career advancement. Talk to you soon and bye for now.